In this lesson, we're gonna talk about dry rubs, marinades, and brines. So you look at a piece of meat, or a piece of chicken, or a piece of pork, or a piece of fish, any kind of protein, and it looks beautiful, but the question is, how do you make it taste even better? How do you add more flavor and more texture? So that's where dry rubs, marinades, and brines come into play. Now there is a key ingredient that flows through all of them, and that is salt. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what salt does when you put it on a protein and why that matters. And then we're gonna talk about dry rubs, how to use them, marinades, how to use them, and brines, what are they good for? All right, let's get started. We're gonna to get to the dry rub first. When it comes to dry rubs, generally they consist of two really easy ingredients, lots of spices and salt. You mix them together, you have a dry rub. Now, some people like to use an adhesive that helps it stick to whatever you're putting the rub on. Olive oil, yellow mustard is very popular. Anything that will give a little bit of moisture. I generally find I don't have to use it when I open a steak, it's generally pretty wet, so you can rub, dry rub all over it and it sticks. Now when it comes to a dry rub, time is on your side. If you just put it on the surface and then you go cooking, you'll get lots of surface flavor, but it doesn't penetrate. How does a dry rub penetrate? Well, it comes down to the salt. So I mix my salt and my spices, and then I rub it on the steak, and now I need time because salt naturally draws moisture out of food. The more moisture that comes out of the food, the more moisture is gonna go back in. So as the moisture comes out, now all the flavors in the dry rub end up penetrating. The key to a dry rub working well is wrapping it tightly in plastic and leaving it in the fridge overnight. If you don't wrap it in plastic, fridge air will evaporate that moisture as it rises to the surface and you're left with no flavor. So in front of me, I have three steaks. Over here, I have a steak with nothing on it. And as you can see, it looks like a steak, nothing special about it. The next one in line is a 10 hour dry rub. So that sat in the fridge, tightly wrapped for about 10 hours. And you can see very distinctly how far that flavor, that salt, and those spices have penetrated. Looks about a quarter of an inch right around the edges. And then a 20 hour one where you can see it's almost made it all the way to the center, even a little bit to the center itself. It almost looks like it's been cured. Now, that's not a bad thing. That is gonna be a incredibly seasoned steak. When you put that on the grill, it's gonna be really tender. It's gonna have flavor all the way through it. Every bite has that salt. Now, there's one more key to a dry rub, which is why I like to use it on large roasts. That moisture and that salt when they react to heat, they end up making this beautiful crust. So you're adding a little bit of texture to your meal. That's dry rubs. We're gonna move on to marinades. When it comes to marinades, there are four basic components to make a delicious marinade. And that is acid, fat, dried spices, and fresh herbs and aromatics. Now here's the thing about marinades. They make everything taste much better, really delicious, but they don't penetrate very much at all. So you'll put a marinade on something, it doesn't really matter whether you leave it for six hours, eight hours, overnight, you get about the same amount of penetration. And that's a result of the acid eating at the surface of the protein. If you add more salt to a marinade, you'll get a little bit more penetration, but still not as much as you get from something like a brine or a dry rub doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, they do add a ton of flavor. So in front of me I have, as an example, raw chicken, and as you can see, looks like raw chicken, nothing special about it, and then a piece of chicken that I marinated for 10 hours, and I did a basic three to one ratio, vinegar to oil, a little bit of salt in there, something that I thought would match, and some spices and herbs. And as you can see, there is a distinct white line on the edge of the chicken, and that is showing you how far the marinade has penetrated. Not very far at all. And now we'll look at the difference between 10 hour and 20 hour, and again, that white line increased the tiniest bit. 10 hours, 20 hours, same thing happened with the marinade. So if you want a good marinade, you can marinate shortly before you cook. You don't have to leave it overnight. That's my take on marinades. When it comes to brining, we're gonna get one thing clear right away. Brining is essentially pickling. If you leave it in salt water for long enough, it turns into a pickle. So 
Why don't we brine a steak? Good question. When you brine something, you're replacing moisture that's in the protein with salt water. Steaks have a lot of intramuscular protein and fat and juices. You don't want to replace that with salt water. That's a bad trade. However, chicken and pork that don't have that intramuscular fat and flavor and juices, you do want to add a little bit of salt water because that adds moisture and flavor. That is the chef's secret. So when we do a brine, I generally do it only for chicken and pork, although if you've had a corned beef or pastrami, that is meat that's been brined for a really long time and essentially pickled. A good brine has three main components, and that is salt, sugar, and aromatic, something to flavor it. And then we dilute it with water and ice that drops the temperature real quick. So let's take a look at these pork tenderloins that I've brined. Now over here we have a pork tenderloin no brine, and as you can see, it is pink throughout, looks like a normal pork tenderloin. Then I have a pork tenderloin, 10 hour brine, basic salt sugar solution, and as you can see, right along the edges, you can see how long, how deeply it's penetrated. So it looks about a quarter of an inch, a little bit more. That's a 10 hour brine, and that means that outer edge is going to be fairly salty because we've replaced any internal moisture with salt water. The key to brining is not to over brine. So sometimes you let it brine a couple of hours and that's enough depending on the size of the protein. And as we look over here, the 20 hour brine, good coloring, goes pretty deep. You can see it's penetrated pretty well. That would be about the maximum time I would leave it, maybe even a little too long. So when it comes to brining, you really want to experiment. Start off light, something that you can play around with, brine it for a little while, see how it cooks, try it again, and really get comfortable with it. When it comes to making chicken, turkey, pork, absolutely the juiciest bite ever, brine is what you need. Now there is one trick to tenderizing meat really quickly, and that is an enzyme called bromelain found in pineapple. Bromelain attacks the proteins immediately. It's actually part of our digestive system, and it starts to break down the protein right away. So when you want to tenderize a tougher cut, pineapple juice is the way to go. Use fresh pineapple juice. Now in front of me I have two flat iron steaks. One of them, nothing has been done to it, and the other one has been soaking in pineapple juice for about two hours. And you can even see in the pineapple juice itself, it's been eating protein. Now we're gonna scrape some of that pineapple juice off so we can take a good look. And we're gonna see very distinct difference in the texture of that surface. It's soft, it's starting to open up a little bit. A little bit more time in that pineapple juice and you're gonna get a steak that is super tender, almost fall apart. Now the problem with pineapple juice is it tenderizes really quickly. So if you leave it in the pineapple juice for too long, it tends to get mushy. Time is not on your side when it comes to this pineapple juice. Be careful when using it, but it does make a terrific addition in your marinades. When it comes to dry rubs, marinades, and brines, it's a great place to start experimenting with flavors. Choose things that you love, mix and match. It's gonna to come together. Give it time. You'll be an expert before you know it. I'm Yankel, see you in the next lesson.